Dragonflies. Well, what is the number one most hated pest that dragonflies will help to get rid of? And wait, are you even sure that some of these dragonflies are even dragonflies? Well, let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now you have so many plants and animals. <laughs> Hey, hello! So, dragonflies. They're some of the most prehistoric animals in the world, right? Existing even way before the dinosaurs. But of course, you know, we still have them today, and we have about 136 species in Singapore. And so, today, we are going to go find some. And they're actually just behind us. So, if you're ready, let's go! Dragonflies are the best to spot when they're the most active during the hot, bright sun, which is why I'm sweating so much. Uh, and they're usually found near water bodies, which they are very dependent on. And that's because their young, or nymphs, are aquatic, which means they live underwater. And actually, dragonflies live most of their lives as these ferocious underwater nymphs for months to years, depending on the species, while feeding on other invertebrates or tadpoles and even small fishes, you know, by using their very fast and extendable hinged jaw like this. And after they've grown big enough and have molted several times, these nymphs will emerge from the water and undergo a final molt to become dragonflies. So dragonflies can be differentiated by their many different colours. And to add to that, many of them are also sexually dimorphic. So that means that a lot of the females and males of the same species will look different. And some of the more common species of dragonflies in Singapore include the common parasol and the crimson drop wing. And they really do come in all these bright and interesting colours. Like, look at this yellow bud flutterer that I found, right? The, the patterns on its wings make it look like a bee, right? And it's probably a sort of mimicry to help deter its predators from eating it. It's so cool, right? However, just like their predators, are you sure that whatever you're seeing is truly what it really is, right? Is every dragonfly really a dragonfly? Well, let me introduce to you to the damselfly. So for a lot of people at first glance, they would just say that, oh, they are dragonflies. But they're actually a separate but very closely related group of insects. And they're actually very easy to differentiate. You just need to look at three main parts. So the first is their wings when they're resting or perching, right? If their wings are opened up, it's a dragonfly. But if it's closed up and positioned at the back, then it's a damselfly. And then look at their eyes, right? If they have large eyes that are very close to each other, like they're almost connected, then it's a dragonfly. Damselflies, on the other hand, have a very distinct gap between their slightly smaller eyes. So their heads look like that of a hammerhead sharks. Lastly, dragonfly bodies are much chunkier, whereas damselflies have very long and thin and twig-like bodies. So damselflies are generally smaller too, although they do range in size. From being somewhat similar in length to your common dragonflies, to be as small as 1 cm. But no matter their size, dragonflies and damselflies are still very ferocious carnivores. But don't worry, they don't pose any threats to humans and it's actually quite the opposite because they actually help to control the population of mosquitoes. So like I've mentioned, their nymphs hunt under the water, right? So actually, a lot of mosquito larvae actually make up their diet. But it's also the same for the adults. Because they, in turn, hunt for adult mosquitoes in the sky, amongst other flying insects. But like a single dragonfly can hunt and eat around maybe 30 to hundreds of mosquitoes in a single day. And this is all thanks to their amazing compound eyes. So compound eyes just means that each eye is actually made out of thousands of other smaller eyes called omatidia that are fused together, right? And although many other insects have compound eyes too, the dragonflies and damselflies have some of the biggest ones. And what makes their special is that they are also binocular, meaning that they can judge distances. And they're also very super sensitive to motion. 
So all of these are to help them locate and hunt for small flying insects like your mosquitoes. So even though this makes them look very alien, we humans actually greatly benefit from their very weird but very useful eyes, right? Because no one likes to get bitten by mosquitoes and then getting sick from the bites. And talking about sick, dragonflies and damselflies are actually very good indicators for us to see if an environment is in good condition because these animals are very sensitive to pollution. And while I do know that some cultures view dragonflies as a symbol of good luck, well, maybe they do know what they are talking about, right? Because these creatures are so weirdly beautiful and amazing, right? And if they prosper, that means that mosquito numbers are controlled and the environment is clean and that means that we prosper too. Right? What's a better symbol for luck than when everyone prospers? And this marks the end of today's episode. But before we leave, I'd like to give a big shout out to our patrons. Mr. Chu, Mr. Chu, Spot Mess, Juno, No, 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 English, Hitcha Queen, Limpets, Muffin, Nana, Nana, Salamat, Jelly, Jets, Kappa, 885, Pink Who Master, Jablock, Tango, Amal, Delon, Neko, Sama, Uncle Sam, Amelia, Crooked Spider, Low Eli, Big Three Circles, Amy, Neron, Angel, Emmy, Stacy, and Lul! Thank you so much for supporting this channel directly and if you would like to do the same, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. Do also follow me on all my other social media platforms and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because I want my eyes to be as big as the dragonfly so I can see where the mosquito are and I can catch them and then they can stop biting me because they're actually biting me over here and it's getting quite annoying, right? Oh, just, just frustration, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>